So this video is going to be covering something that is a little bit different from code editors or web browsers or anything like that. This is going to be talking about Steam and Linux gaming. So recently you've probably heard about the new Windows game playability on Linux through Steam. So I thought it would be good to walk through a quick video of getting Steam running on Linux. And the first thing that you're gonna do, you might think it might be to go to the App Center over here and type in Steam and kind of just go for it. But that's actually not what you want to do. And the reason is because of this new compatibility layer that they're calling Vulkan, there is a really, really big need to have correct drivers for your system. And in my case, I am running an NVIDIA graphics card. So when I first installed Elementary OS, I came in here and installed the pre-built NVIDIA driver package. Now, this is fine for generic use. You won't really notice any hiccups watching YouTube videos or you know, running games from the App Store, but if you use Steam, you need to be running a driver version that is more recent than this. And um, this may blow up this video, we're gonna see, but so we're actually gonna uninstall this driver. And so I'm gonna to have to authenticate here. And this is going to affect my system in a way that I'm going to need to reboot. But before we do that, we're gonna also prompt the new driver to install. So we're gonna wait for this package to finish removing. And then I'm gonna show you how to install the correct driver that we need. Okay, so this is done. And now we're gonna open up a terminal and we need to add a repository because again, this doesn't come with elementary. And this is actually a driver repository that can break your system if you're not careful. But if we just install the version, um, that is listed on the Steam guide, we should be okay. Now, this is just for NVIDIA. If you have an AMD graphics card, your instructions are going to be different. I'm not going to talk about them here because I haven't had an AMD graphics card in a while, so I am unfamiliar with what that landscape currently looks like. So now that we've added that repository, we, as always, need to update our list of sources. And once that's done, we need to install the 396 version of the NVIDIA driver. So we're gonna do a sudo apt-get install NVIDIA driver. Now, if you wanted to see what all versions were available, instead of doing apt-get install, you can do an apt-get cache search and just have a term here. And it'll actually list the results that are listed in that repository. I've made a typo here. This needs to be apt cache instead of apt get for this search. Now you can see the results that all come back here and you can see a pretty big list, but what we're actually after is one thing in particular, which is the 396. And we don't see this listed necessarily right here, but we do see this NVIDIA driver 396. So that's the one we're actually after. So we can just copy this, again, control shift C, or you could right click and hit copy, and then control shift V to paste, or you could right click and paste. And then we're gonna get prompted and hit yes, or just enter to confirm. And this could take a couple minutes depending on your internet connection. Um, it's a pretty good sized package that you're downloading here. When this completes, you will need to do a system reboot. So I am going to finish this up and reboot and I will be back as soon as that is done. And hopefully I can get <laughs> uh, my system posted again. Okay, so I'm back from a system reboot and now really quickly we wanna check what version of the NVIDIA drivers were installed just so we know we got the right thing. So I'm gonna click on applications and look for NVIDIA X server settings. If you don't see it here, you can just type in NVIDIA and it should be the first result that shows up. And what we wanna see here is this 
something or three nine something higher than three nine six. Remember previously I had three nine zero, so it's good to see that higher version number there. That means our install worked correctly. So we're going to go ahead and quit out of that, and now we can go about installing Steam. We just want to open up a terminal, and for me that's just right here on the dock, but it could be up here in applications, and you can just type in a terminal, or you could also hit super key T to open up terminal, whatever works for you. So now we're just going to do a sudo apt get install Steam. It'll go through and install. Now once that's done, we can go back up to our applications menu and type in Steam. There it is, open it up. Now this will have to download the Steam launcher itself. The package we installed is an Ubuntu repository. It's not actually managed by elementary. It's an Ubuntu repository that contains a wrapper for the Steam application. So it's a little bit of a mess, but just doing the app get install Steam will get us this and then Steam will worry about installing all the dependencies and stuff that it needs and actually updating the client, which is what this is. This may flash a couple of times and restart depending on how many updates it has to get from Steam. So if it goes away, you don't need to panic. It'll come back, but it's just having to restart because it's updating the client itself. Now when it comes back up, after all of these updates, I'm going to hide it for a minute because I'm going to go do a login and two-factor code and all that good stuff, and I'll come back as soon as I'm logged in. Okay, so Steam has now launched. We're going to get this ugly news out of the way, and we're going to hop on over to the library and see what we can find that's not compatible with Linux by default. Astroneer is a good example. Uh, as you can see, we have no play button here. But now with this new compatibility layer, all we have to do is co come up here to Steam, go to Settings, Steam Play, and enable Steam Play for all titles, and just hit OK. And it'll give us a little warning that we're going to restart Steam. And that'll take a minute because it has to get some stuff in the background set up, but then it'll relaunch. And we can hop back over here to our library, and now you can see we have the option to install and run on this computer via Steam Play. So we'll install it, and our default library location should be fine. It's allocated the space, and we'll come back when that has finished download. Okay, so our download just finished. Now we can hop in here and play it and see what happens. Now when you hit play, you're going to be prompted with this Steam Play warning now with a link to this FAQ because not all of these titles are going to work flawlessly with this. And this is essentially a warning talking about that and some of the performance hits you may see. But we're just going to hit continue. And now Steam over here is going to install some things in the background because it needs extra things since it's not really meant to run on Linux on its own. So as you can see, it's getting like Microsoft Direct X, which is normally bundled with Windows, but we aren't in Windows, so it has to install that separately. Now, as you can see, this is the default message we would expect on the first time launching this game. And get in here and let's, let's go ahead and skip this tutorial because I've already played this game. But let's launch this. That's looking pretty good. We can look around here and view. Everything is looking really smooth. Of course, Astroneer isn't the most demanding game in the first place, but not normally supported on Linux, so.
there you go. That is how you get started with Steam and 